Hi there, thanks for joining us. Can a multinational corporation that does not have an office inside Canada, but which is looking to uh, get established in Canada and eventually send employees to Canada, can that multinational corporation um, secure work authorization for its future employees under the intra-company transfer program? The answer is yes, but the rules have changed. Hi there, welcome back. My name is Donovan Francis. I'm a Canadian immigration lawyer and I help businesses with their employees' work permit applications and save them from all of the legal hassle. In this video, I want to talk to you about the Intra-Company Transferry Startup Program, ICT Startup. The ICT Startup is a means for a multinational company that does not yet have an operation in Canada to eventually set up a, an operation and send employees to Canada. Now, the rules surrounding an ICT have changed. In the past, a multinational uh, or a, a company that was not even a multinational company, so a single company that was an international company, meaning they did not have a Canadian operation. Let's say they had, for example, an office in the US and that was the only office uh, that was the only country that they've had an office in, then that international company in the past may have been able to create a, a company here in Canada, meaning incorporate a company. And then once they've incorporated and established an office, then they may have been able to transfer an employee from their foreign location, their US office to the Canadian location. So that is known as the ICT startup because they would have had to start up the initial Canadian operation that eventually would be receiving the new employees who would be coming to work in Canada on work permits, on ICT work permits issued under this ICT startup program. So that was the program as it existed uh, before the Canadian Immigration Authorities made changes to the program in October of 2024. Now, Going forward, an international company may still complete an ICT startup. However, that company must have operations in its home country and it must also have a revenue generating operation in at least one other company. So both its home company should home, both the companies in, in, in its home country should be generating a revenue, but it should also have another office in another country somewhere else in the world that is also generating uh, revenue. Only then will that company be able to access uh, the ICT startup program. And in doing so, that company then would need to establish an entity in a third country, which in this case would be Canada. It would need to establish a, an entity inside Canada and then transfer its employees to the Canadian location. Okay, so that's a significant change. So whereas in the past there needed to be only two entities, right? The one outside of Canada that was wanting to send its employees to its newly established Canadian entity. But now the company outside Canada must also have a, a successful business in a second country other than its home country before it qualifies to, 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 to set up an ICT um, startup program inside Canada. So that's a significant change that has impacted the ICT startup program. So ICT startup is, you know, an important uh, tool for uh, multinational corporations that may have won a contract inside Canada. You've, they've won a contract here, they need to service the, the contract, but they have no employees here. So they want to transfer some of their high-skilled employees or senior executive employees from their uh, foreign location into Canada. Okay, so the ICT startup allows an entity to first become incorporated inside Canada, you know, set up an office uh, inside Canada, and then transfer employees to that office. Um, another thing that um, a company wanting to take advantage of the ICT startup program needs to bear in mind is that currently if, if workers are being sent to Canada, the workers must be sent 
to a, a, a set commercial lo office location. Whereas in the past, you know, especially on the ICT, a foreign company may have been able to set up a, a virtual office um, and, um, and the employee may have been able to work remotely on, on arrival in Canada. Now there's a requirement for ICT in general that there be some kind of an established uh, office location that the employee is going to be working out of and a remote type of setup is not going to be viable for, for this um, ICT startup nor any of the other uh, ICT programs. So that's going to be something also important to bear in mind for somebody wanting to establish a new um, qualifying entity inside Canada so as to be able to take advantage of the ICT program. Now, separate and apart from the, the recent changes to the ICT programs program, there are also other requirements that are crucial for the ICT. For instance, you know, um, the company needs to convince the immigration authorities that this is going to be a, um, a you know, successful uh, business that is going to um, bring significant benefits to Canada. And one of the things the company will need to do when it's um, attempting to set up the Canadian operation is to have a business plan that outlines exactly how the uh, Canadian society and the Canadian economy and the Canadian labor force will benefit from the establishment of this company. You know, how the specialized knowledge that its employees have will be transferred to Canadians and so on. And so a business plan is going to be a crucial element um, for this setup. And obviously this company will need to show that it has sufficient revenue to um, offset its expenses inside Canada. All right. The company will also need to show that it has sufficient um, revenue to offset its expenses inside Canada. So I trust you found this bit of information about the ICT startup um, visa program useful. And as always, please go ahead and like our videos, uh, subscribe to our channel and check us out on go.goosla.com. Thanks. See you again.